Today we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. And we're going to start off with, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this. Just go down to 100%. There we go. Okay. We are going to start off with something called continuous compounding. That's what this is called, compounded continuously. Now, we did work on some banking problems, some savings, like for instance, savings account problems. If you recall a little bit earlier that were exponential problems, they were exponential equations, and they had this formula A, equals P parentheses one plus R over N to the NT. Where this is the accumulated amount accumulated over time. This is the principal, the original amount of money you put in the bank, you put in the savings account. That's the that's the best um, example. Although, um, as I said at the time, this um, this formula is at the basis for all of our financial formulas. All right, this is the principal. This is the interest rate written as a decimal. That's what the bank pays you to keep your money in a savings account. T is the number of years that you have your money in the account. And N is the number of compounding periods. That's when your interest is calculated and then put back into your account so that your balance keeps growing and the interest on it keeps growing and put back into the account so the balance keeps growing. Um, so these are the compounding periods. That's what N is. Well now, oh, and the compounding periods periods per year. And the periods per year that we worked with were um, annual, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, and yearly. Uh, well, yearly is annual, um, daily, I mean, okay. So um, now if you can imagine those compounding periods being every second of the day, every day of the week, every week of the year, all week long for a number of years, that's called continuous compounding, where the interest is constantly compounded every second or every half second or every quarter second. It's a theoretical upper limit. When you know how much money you're putting in the bank, when you know what the interest rate is and you know what the amount of time is going to be, you can use this formula that we're going to talk about today to decide which savings account or which CD, something like that, which account is going to be the best for you because we're dealing with the theoretical most that you could earn on a savings account. And this is called continuous compounding. The general formula for continuous compounding is A, the accumulated amount, equals P, the principal, same as up here. But now there's a change. T 
times the number E, which is about 2.7, raised to the R, which is the same as here, and the T, which is the same as here. Okay, so you have the accumulated amount equals the principal times E raised to the interest rate written as a decimal times the time in years. And that's the formula we're going to work with. So let's read the story here. Suppose $17,751 is invested at an interest rate of 6.2% per year compounded continuously. Okay. Our P, the principal it says here, is $17,000. $751. And our interest rate is going to be 6.2% with the decimal move two places to the left. So that R is going to be written as 0 0.062. We're going to put that information into this general formula and come up with this specific formula, which is, now I can make this bigger, 17,751, all right, that's your principal, times E raised to the interest rate written as a decimal, times T. This is called the specific formula. All right, now notice they use P of T here. There's no particular reason for that. It's whatever you or the person writing the problem, whatever letter they want to use, but it will always be in this form. The accumulated amount, here P of T is the accumulated amount, A. And it's just what the author of the problem decided to call A. You just have to get used to that and be flexible. Okay, so A is just a matter of filling the information from the story into the formula. So this is our specific formula, and we are going to calculate uh, B, all of the Bs. This is B1. A good way to think of this. This is question B1 and question B2 and question B3 and question B4. These are all parts of B. And then C is something else called doubling time. So we'll talk about that also. But right now, let's use the specific formula to calculate how much money you're going to have in the bank. What is the balance at the end of one year, two years, five years, and 10 years? And for this, we're going to use the calculator. All right, so I'm going to start with, and I will make, I'll make the calculator larger, make the picture larger, after I get the uh, basic formula into it, because I have to be able to see the numbers. 17751. Now, I can get E raised to a power by clicking on the second button and then LN. So second LN, point zero six, uh-uh. Six two point zero six two times the number of years the money is in the bank. And we're starting with what is the balance after one year? So I'm going to multiply by one. Okay, now 
we're going to go to the calculator. This is what I've got in the calculator. 17,751, notice there is no comma when you're putting a number into the calculator. 17,751 times E raised to the 0.062 interest rate times one year. And I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to copy and paste the numbers I'm about to get over onto the, uh, the worksheet, and I'm going to do that in just a minute. But there is a quick way to do this, and I'm going to show you. Actually, we've talked about it before, and we're going to do it again. I don't really want to have to rewrite all of this because every time I do, there's a chance that I'll get one little number wrong and then blow the whole problem. So the way to prevent that is to push the second key and the enter key. Now, this is set for one year. I'm going to use my left arrow key here to move back and back so that the cursor is blinking on top of the one and I'm going to click on two. That changed the one to a two. And so I hit enter. This is your balance after two years. Now, let me make sure I've got my numbers right. Seven, 17751, yes I do. Okay, so now we're going to move to five years and then 10 years, is that correct? One year, two years, five years, 10 years, yes. All right, second enter. I move back two places and I put in a five. Enter. And then one more time, I'll go second enter and move back one, two places and I hit 10, and I hit enter. So that here are, are our answers in raw form. Oops, oops, no, I don't wanna go there. There now. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste. and put them down here. Okay. So this is after one year, balance after one year. This is the balance over here. And this is after one year, after two years, after five years, and after 10 years. Now, at some point we have to read the instructions. What a concept. Simplify your answers and round to two decimal places as needed. OK, that's what we're going to do. Two decimal places ends right here. So two decimal places. Two decimal places. Two decimal places. And two decimal places. Now, starting at year one, I look immediately to the right, and I have a five here, so that five is going to cause the 39 to move up to a 40. So my answer will be 18,000, 
$886.40. Now here, I go to my second decimal place. I look immediately to the right. That three is not big enough to make the one go up to a two. So I just drop off these numbers and my answer will be 20,000. 094, 41. 20,094.41. Now, after five years, your balance is going to be $24,202. And my two decimal places go out to the one, five, Five is my second decimal place. This nine will cause the five to move up to a six. So the number of cents I have is 16. And then finally, the second decimal place is three, and the one will not cause the three to move up to a four. So I will just drop off the one, six, seven, and my answer will be 32,997 and 83 cents. Now we check and see if those are correct. 18,886.40, check. $20,094.41, yes. $24,202.16, yes. And $32,997, up uh, $32,997.83, check. Okay, so you can see it's a simple calculator problem. You have to practice how to do it, but once you get it, you can do the calculator part really quickly. Remember, E is just a number. All right, now we're going to talk about doubling time, and that's a very important concept in banking. Actually, in just about anything that deals with uh, exponential growth. Doubling time is the time it takes, so T will equal, T will equal, The time it takes your principal to grow to twice itself, in other words, to double. All right, this is how you do it. You start with your formula. And remember, they're calling the accumulated amount P of T equals the principal, which is $17,751. Times E to the interest rate written as a decimal times T. I have to write it as T because that's what we're going to find. Okay, we want to know how long it's going to take for the accumulated amount to grow to two times the original amount. I mean, you, you would care about that if it was your money in the bank. How long is it going to take to double? Here's how you do it. Okay, and for this I've written two times. 
17751. 17, Let's just say it like that. 2 times 17751 equals 17751 times e to the 0 0.062 t power. Now, the first thing I do to solve this is I divide both sides of the equation by the number in front of E, and you're going to do that over and over again. Divide by 17, 751. 17, 751. So over here, the 17, 751s cancel, and they do over here too. This is two times seven, uh, 17,751 divided by 17,751. So the 17,751s cancel. And what you're left with is two equals E to the point zero six two times T. Now all I have to do is solve for T. That's the hard part, because how do you get the T to come down so you can solve for it? And the answer is you have to take the logarithm of each side. And when you have an E in your equation, the logarithm you use is the natural logarithm, which is ln. You're going to take the ln of both sides of the equation, like that. Then, the reason we take the ln is it permits us to bring down the exponent by using the power rule of logarithms. I take the exponent and I move it down in front, 0 0.062t times the ln of E. I'll put the E in parentheses. Now, the ln of E is a magic number because it equals one. Put it in your calculator if you don't believe me. The ln of E is one. We have talked about that before. So over here on the right side, we're going to have 0 0.062t times one, which is 0 0.062t. And that equals the ln of two. So to solve for t, all I have to do is divide by the number in front of t. the number that multiplies t. I divide by it because that's the inverse operation of uh, division is the inverse operation of multiplication. That's why. Operationally, what that means is uh, points dividing by 0 0.062 cancels out that 0 0.062. All right, meanwhile, what that means is First, it means that this is the exact answer, which is not what they're asking for because it says simplify your answer round. Round means use your calculator. Round means get a decimal and then round to however many places it tells you to round to. And here it says one decimal place. OK, so I'm going to go back to my calculator. And what I'm going to do is this. The L, um, T equals the ln of 2 over the interest rate, which is 0 0.062. And that's going to equal, gosh, what will that equal? I don't know. Let's find out. 
Oh no, come on, clear. All right, all right, second quit. That's not working either. Second off. I'm gonna have to turn the whole thing off. What a bother. That's the, the one glitch that I have found in this calculator. And I probably should report it just to make life um, a little easier. Now, clear. There now. Woo! Okay. Um, t this is uh, um, this has been made free to the public, free to everybody in schools, so you could get one. Um, and what they're doing is they're asking people to send in the glitches they find. Uh, it's a way of of. Um, uh, yeah, it's a way of improving the product once they have, the scientists at TI, have made the product as good as they can make it. They know that if they hand it out to the public, there's no telling what we'll do with it. We'll find all sorts of things that are still wrong. Okay, Microsoft does the same thing. Anyway, back to work. What T equals is the LN, so I push the LN button, two, close parentheses, divided by 0 0.062. And I have to round this, remember, to one decimal place. Let me go ahead and, for the sake of the notes and for people reading the notes, I'll put this on the page. Somewhere, somewhere I'm going to put it on this page. Um, there it is. So we'll make it small. And we will drag it down. And put it there. Yeah. And then hope it'll be big enough for you to read. Here we go. We have, let me make this big again, 11.1797 blah, blah, blah. We need to round to one decimal place. The seven, just to the right of the first decimal place, will cause, is big enough to cause the one to go up to a two, to round up to a two. So, my answer is going to be 11.2 years. In 11.2 years, your principal will double. Now it's up to you to decide if, well, I think I need to go to another bank or if that's acceptable to you. And so be sure to read over these notes as you do the homework. Also, you'll have a recording. But sometimes just the notes are better. The good thing about a video is you can back it up and play over again, back it up and play over again. Now we're going to see how um, another use, we're going to see another use of the uh, continuous compounding formula. Following the birth of a child, a parent wants an initial investment, P naught, that's the way you say that sub zero, P sub zero is P naught. That will grow to $50,000 for the child's education at age 19. Interest is compounded continuously at 5%. What should the initial investment be? Uh, such an amount is called the present value of $50,000 due 19 years from now. Now, here's what, here is what that is saying. If we use A, the accumulated amount, equals 
P, which they're calling P naught, E to the RT. The accumulated amount after time is going to be $50,000. What they're asking is, OK, for little Susie or little Henry or 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 whoever. To be able to have a college fund, how much do I need to put in there today so that in 19 years it becomes $50,000? So we're going to be solving for P naught. Now P naught is multiplied by E to the RT. Now 5% equals 5.0 with the decimal point moved two places to the left. So that will be 0 0.05 times 19 years. OK. Now. I'm going to do the following thing. I don't want to take the LN of both sides. Not with that P naught stuck in the middle. So I am going to solve for P naught first. Notice. This problem does. Oh, yes, it does. They all say this and it is true. Every time you use your calculator, you cause a little bit of round off error. The more often you use your calculator on a particular problem, the more the, the greater the amount of error until you can get enough error so that you actually get the problem marked wrong. So this says, and please pay attention to it, do not round until the final answer. It's really true. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take E to the 0.5 times 19. That's a number. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by E to the 0 0.05 times 19. E to the 0 0.05 times 19. Cancels out over here. And now we see what P naught is going to equal. And even though this has an E in it, I don't have to use the LN, which is great. So let's do this. We're going to take this and put that in the calculator in the following way. We're going to take $50,000, 50,000, divided by E. All right, E to a power. So I push second LN, and that just sets me up, ready to put in the power. Okay, 0 0.05 times 19. That's all there is to it. Enter. And that's the answer I get. Latin, yeah. Whoop. Now let's see. This is what P naught equals, so this is what it's telling us. All right, round to two decimal places. Money is usually rounded, not always, but usually rounded to two decimal places. Here's two decimal places right there. There's the second decimal place. The one will not cause the five to round up to a six. So that's our answer. Your initial investment, mom and dad, 
needs to be that. So you take that on into your local bank and um, that'll give you a 5% interest. Compounded continuously. Now that is the upper limit. Put in that much, get out that much in um, 19 years. Now we're going to go to straight out exponential growth. Populations grow exponentially if they don't have a sufficient number of natural enemies in their environment to keep the population in check. Populations of everything grow exponentially when there aren't enough natural enemies. Humans grow exponentially. The population grows exponentially. Um, bunnies, the population of bunnies grows exponentially if there aren't enough wolves and coyotes and whatnot to eat them. Bacteria grow exponentially. The population does. And viruses grow exponentially. Epidemics grow exponentially. Okay, so in 2012, the population of a city was 5,000 up, was 5.74 million. The exponential growth rate was 3.36% per year. Find the exponential growth function. Okay. We're going to talk about for a minute the general exponential growth function, which is the same as continuous compounding. The general exponential growth is A equals A naught E to the KT. Now what is that? That's just like the P of T used in the last problem. This is just like P naught. It's the amount you start with. K is really the interest rate. It's the same idea. This is the rate of population growth, and T is, now, this is the difference. In science, you can make T be anything you want. It can be seconds, it can be minutes, it can be years, it can be decades, it can be millennia. Okay, that's the general formula. What we have to do is take this information and put it in there and come up with the specific formula and you can see how they did that. You're the researcher, you're working for the city and you start your study at 2012. For you, that's the beginning of time. For the time of your study, this is when time began. This is T equals zero. Before you start the stopwatch. OK, so our beginning year is 2012. Now here's what we do. We fill in this. A naught is the beginning population. Beginning of your study, not the beginning of time, all time, but just the beginning of 2012. 
5.74, and we just take that as million. Times E to the interest rate. This is how we do the interest rate, 3.36 percent, move the decimal point two places to the left, and that's what makes it 0 0.0336. And then T is time, and it says, so we know that time is going to be in years. And that gives us our specific formula for this problem. So that's what you do to get the answer to A. You just put the numbers you're given into the formula. And this is what we're going to work with for the rest of the problem. So now we're being asked, what is the population of the city going to be in 2018? Here's the answer. You're not supposed to know the answer. We have to arrive at the answer. All right, what is 2018? I'm, don't put 2018 in for T. Instead, what T is going to be is 2018 minus 2012. Because T is the years after 2012. 2012 is the beginning of time for your study. 2018 minus 2012 is six years, okay? You don't put the years, you just put six. So we're gonna put a six in there for the T. So here we go. Move this over so I can see it. We're going to put a six in for the T there. So we're going to have 5.74 second LN point zero three three six times six years. So that's what I have. I'll hit enter and then drag that answer. No, not that. This drag it over to our worksheet. Our worksheet. We can actually probably fit it in right there. So that's the answer I get. And once we go down to 100%, see it's going to be very readable. It's about the same size as the print right there. But we need it bigger for video. Okay, now, yeah. Round to one decimal place. So here is one decimal place. And the two will not cause the zero to round up to a one. So 7.0 million in six years. That's what the population should be if this is an accurate formula. And all of these formulas are used for prediction. And that assumes that everything stays mostly the same. It doesn't account for things like COVID-19 or an economic crash like in the year 2008. 
Most of you, many of you were children, you don't even remember 2008, but you probably remember your parents getting hysterical. I went out and I bought a couple of thousand dollars worth of canned goods because I was afraid I'd be starving. It was a terrible time if you were a grown up. 2008, ask your history teachers about that. Okay, the population of the city, this is B. So here's C. The population of the city will be 8 million in about how many, because this is the answer we don't know yet, in about how many years? I don't know. So let's do it. Our population after time is being called P of T. And we know that the formula is 5.74. Well, I have it right there. 5.74 E to the point zero three three six. T. And what it's saying is, OK, OK. So when does the population get to be 8 million? <coughs> well. Now we're going to go in steps, and there are steps you have to follow. Step one. Divide both sides by the number in front of E. And do not hit your calculator. It's so tempting. You really want to put this in your calculator, 8 divided by 5.74, and find out what it is. But no, do not. You can live with this. I learned to. 8 divided by 5.74 equals E to the point 0. 336T. That's what we've got now. To bring this T down, I have to take the logarithm of both sides and the logarithm I'm going to use because there's an E in the equation is the natural logarithm, which is LN. The LN of the left side the ln of the right side. And then I'm going to use the power rule. Which says bring this exponent down in front. OK. I'll have the ln of 8 over 5.74 equals the exponent, which I have hidden, 0 0.0336t times the ln of e, which is 1. So 0 0.0336t zero three three six t times 1 is just 0 0.03. 36t. And that equals the ln of 8 over 5.74. Then to solve for t, I divide by the rate, the growth rate. K, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.0336, 0 0.
0 0.0336. 0 0.0336 cancels. And this is what I'm going to calculate and round to one decimal place as needed. And I should get 9.9 .9 years. Let's see. Oh, come on. Be good. Try to be good. Excuse me a minute. No. There. Okay. Now, LN of 8 divided by 5.7. Divided by, now notice I had to close my parentheses after the 5.74. Parentheses, 0 0.0336. Enter. That's what I've got. Yes, and that 8 will round that 8 up to a 9. Yay for us. There it is. All right, here's the here's the one decimal place. I would rather do it in blue. This 8 over here will cause this 8 to round up to a 9, which will give me 9.9 .9 years. I even forget what we were asking. Ah, see, the population of the city will be 8 million in about 9.9 .9 years. Let's just between us, let's call it 10 years. Now we're going to check out the doubling time. Oops, I need another page. Okay, I can do that. There, okay. We're going to have the doubling time. I need to go back to this formula, and the quickest and easiest way to do it without making a mistake is just to take a quick little picture of it and scroll on down here. Quite honestly, I don't know what my life would be if Microsoft had not invented Snip and Sketch. It comes with your windows. Okay, well, we can just make it little. Yeah, I just need to see what it is. We're gonna be doing the doubling time. Doubling time means how long will it take 5.74 to become two times 5.74? So here, D, I think that's D, is doubling time. So two times 5.74 
equals 5.74 e to the point 0.336 t. We're going to solve for t, find out what makes that true. What number of years makes that statement true? So first thing, I divide by five, I divide by the number in front of e, 5.74, 5.74, and the 5.74s cancel out on both sides of the equal sign. That will leave me two equals e to the point three, three, six T. After which I take, I should do that in a separate step. The ln of two equals the ln of E to the point zero three three six. T like that. And then we use the power rule. Which allows us to bring the exponent down in front on the right side. So we've got the ln of 2 equals 0 0.0336 t times the ln of e, which is just 1. So that 0 0.0336 times t times 1 is 0 0.0336 t equals the ln of 2. This is k. We're going to divide both sides by the K number. A nine. Why did I do that? It's an inverted six, I guess. There you go. Now let me make sure I didn't mess up this K in more than one place. No, I didn't. Okay. So this is D, by the way. D, part D. Doubling time. For a population. All right, and I get the calculator. Going to take the ln of two divided by point zero three three six. And now let's find out how many places I have to round to. Round to one decimal place, yay! Okay, so T is going to equal this. And then I'm going to talk to you about a quicker way to do this, to do the doubling time. There is no really easier way to do it. Okay, they want us to round to one decimal place. There's the one decimal place. 
20.6. I look over at the two, the two is not big enough to cause the six to round up to a seven. So I am going to make a guess that in 20.6 years, which is a little over 20 and a half years, the population will double from its original 5.74 million. Now here, and in the previous exponential growth problems, the general formula for exponential growth is a equals a naught e to the kt, where k is a positive number. That's the growth rate. k is the growth rate. In a continuous compounding formula, The general formula is A equals P E to the RT. It's the same exact formula with different letters. This is the interest rate written as a decimal. K is the growth rate written as a decimal, but when you're doing continuous compounding, your R is the growth rate because presumably your money is growing. So it's the same exact formula. And for both of these, since they're the same thing, for continuous compounding, and exponential growth. Here's the shortcut. Did you, you, <laughs> Okay, doubling time or doubling amount. They're both called doubling time. All right, for both of these. So I'll just keep writing it out here. Doubling time. is this, the ln of 2 over the growth rate, which is called either R or K. And that's the time it takes for the initial amount, whether it's an initial amount of people or an initial amount of bunny rabbits, <clears throat> an initial amount of bacteria, an initial amount of money. It doesn't matter. 
the time it takes to double the original amount is always going to be the ln of 2 over the growth rate. I think that's cool. All right, now one more, and I think there is no more after this. No, okay, one more. I wanted to introduce you to logistic functions. This is an exponential growth formula, but it's used when there's an upper, an upper limit to the growth. And it looks pretty darn ugly, like, uh-uh, I don't want to use that. But actually, you're not being asked to do much of anything with it except calculate in your calculator. So, let us do that. What we're being asked to do is, well, here's the story. In a town whose population is 3,900, a disease creates an epidemic. The number of people in infected at time T, days after the disease has begun, is given by this function. That's the number of people infected. And you know how infections work. More and more people are going to be infected. But there's an upper limit because the town is quarantined. And luckily, nobody was pregnant, or at least not immediately pregnant, um, not about to deliver. So that in this space of time, the original population does not change, and apparently nobody even dies while we're calculating. So that's a good thing. So we're asked first, how many are initially infected with the disease? Initially means that time equals zero. That's the way scientists say beginning. OK, and it gives us the answer here. Let's see if we can come up with that answer. What we're going to do is put this in the calculator. 3900 divided by 1 plus 24.3 e to the negative 0.6 t, where t is 0. Then we're going to do the same exact thing except for 2 days, 5 days, 8 days, 12 days, and 16 days. So I'm going to pull up the calculator now. There. There. Okay. So let's see how we can do this. <clears throat> 3,900 divided by paren 1 plus 24.3 second ln negative 0.6 times 0. Now, you've got to hit the right arrow key here. Let me make this bigger now. You've, if, if I hit parenthesis right now, look at that. Is that sick? No, I won't get the right answer that way. So I'm going to delete it. 
Instead, I'm going to hit the right arrow key, just like you do in my math lab. And that brings me down to ground level and I can hit my parenthesis in order to tell the calculator I'm done with the denominator and then go ahead and calculate the answer. Now we're going to do the same thing for two days, five days, eight days, 12 days, and 16 days. And we're going to do this by second enter and just backing up, up there to where the zero is. And now I'm going to put in two days and then come on out to the end and hit enter. Now five days, eight days, five days, eight days, 12 days, 16 days. We'll see how much of that I remember. Okay, second, enter. Left, left uh, arrow key, left arrow key, left arrow key. Five. Boom, boom, enter. Now, second, enter. Back up, left arrow key, left arrow key, left arrow key. Eight days. Enter. Now, second, enter. Back up, we're going to change the eight to a ten. Enter. And one more. No, two more. 12 and 16. Oh, good grief. All right. Second, enter. Back up, back up, back up. We're going to change that zero to a two. Enter. And finally, second, enter, back up, back up, back up. We're going to change the two to a six. Enter. Oh, good gravy. All right, I want to bring all of this over to the worksheet. I'm going to have to make two passes to do that. There we go. So there's my snipping tool. Hello, new there. So I'll take these four first. And then I'm going to go back and scroll down. And bring up the other three. Eight, nope, I already did eight, didn't I? I don't remember, so I'll do it again. What the heck?
Yep. OK, we're going to have eight twice. Worst things have happened. All right, let's see if I'm right here. Uh, round to the nearest whole number. All of these say whole number, whole number, whole number, nearest whole number, nearest whole number, all of them. OK, so. The nearest whole number means. That we are going to be looking at the number on the left side of the decimal. There. All right, the, I, I look over at the one, the one will not cause the four to go up to a five, so my answer um, will be, for the first, the first answer will be 154. This is, um, at the very beginning, how many people are infected? All right, after two days, here we have 468, this eight, over there will cause this eight to move up to a nine. After two days, we're going to have 469. After five days, all right, I have 1,764, and this eight on the other side of the decimal is going to cause the four to go up to a five. One, seven, six, five on day five. On day eight, 3,250, and this zero on the other side of the decimal is not going to cause the zero to round up to a one. So we will have three, two, five, zero on day eight, which is doubled. Okay, now, Day 10, I don't mean the number of people infected is doubled, I meant I put it there, I put day eight twice. Just remembering that. Okay, day 10, 3,678 people and the point four will not cause the eight to round up to a nine. So day 10 will have 3,678 people infected. Day 12, we have 3,830 people and this 0.5 over there will cause the zero to round up to a one. So 3,830 people are infected by day 12. By day 16, we have 3893 and this 0.5 on the other end will cause, I mean, on the, on the right side of the decimal, will cause the three to round up to a four. So 3,894 people will be infected. That is out of a total of 3,900 people. So yeah, that works. That works. Uh, oh yeah, I should have rounded that up to a one. My boo-boo. Yeah, over here, the five will cause the zero to round up to a one. Okay, three, six, seven, eight. That's 10 days. <gasps> they didn't ask us about 10 days. Well, just in case you were curious. Um, eight days, three, two, five, zero. Five days, 1765. Two days, 469. And in the beginning, 154. Yes, indeed. Now, it says use the model. Using the model, this is the model right here. Using the model, can you say whether all 3,900 people will ever be infected? Explain. And then they give you multiple choice. Well, let's see. Let's explore this. We're going to take the formula and move it down. 
so we can look at it down below. Ooh, big. Okay. I will have to make that bigger because this is blown up. And when it goes back to 100%, it could be too small for you to see. All right, let us explore this. What this is, if we were to write this after I flatten it, let's go back to black. Okay, 3,900 divided by one plus 24.3. Now, e to a negative exponent is 1 over e to the positive exponent, 0.6 t. Now, as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, e to the 0.6 t will get bigger and bigger and bigger. But one doesn't change. So one over, one being divided by a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger number is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller I can't get any bigger. Oh, come on. There now. I can't. Eek. All right. This is going to cause the fact that the denominator here, this keeps getting my irritation at myself. All right, this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So one divided by a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that we have a number here We're multiplying this number by an expression that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero. It'll never actually equal zero, but it sure will be small. It's approaching zero. So how do I say that? All right. One over e to the point 0.6t, this number is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So that 224.3 uh, times that number, times the number that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller really close to zero is also going to be getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So that you're going to have 3,900 divided by one plus a decimal that's ever, that's getting ever smaller.
However, it doesn't disappear. For all intents and purposes, it'll be zero, but it's not really zero. So you'll have one plus a really small decimal. Divided into 3,900, well, you know that 3,900 over just one would be 3,900, but you cannot escape the fact that this number never disappears. It just keeps getting smaller. So you'll always have a number a little bit bigger than one going into 3,900. So no, the number infected will never be 3,900, but it will be really, really close. So whereas a doctor would say, yes, everybody's going to get infected, a mathematician would say, no, everybody is not going to get infected. Somebody's little finger will not be infected. That's a joke. But no, the answer you're going to go for is no, the whole 3,900 people will never be infected. If you ever take calculus, you will understand. Of course, after you take calculus, you'll believe that a train never really hits an obstacle on the tracks. It just keeps getting infinitely closer. So there's there are like different realms of reality going on here. Don't let it worry you. The real answer is no, not all 3,900 3, will get infected. For these reasons. All right, this is it. This is our last class. Now you go and you study for the final exam. Do your homework, study for the final exam. Until this Friday, December 11th at 1159 p.m., you will be able to redo your homework and redo your practice exams over and over and over again. Now, if you have not taken exam one or exam two twice, you'll be able to do that until Friday at 11.59 p.m. After that, you have got to start doing nothing but the practice final exam. The goal now is to pass, pass the class. Somehow, some way, you have got to get a grade 70% or above in order to pass the class. That's true for all college level classes. So, good luck, and I'm here to answer your questions. I'll be sitting here on Monday and Wednesday next week doing answer question and answer sessions with you. You don't have to be here, but I will be here in case you want to come on in and ask me some questions. OK. You know my email address. I look forward to talking to you and I have really enjoyed this semester. I hope everybody makes an A. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. See you later.